the Healing Through Love podcast with Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. In episode 130, discover somatic healing, nervous system regulation and trauma recovery with Hannah Blackburn. I do a method called somatic experiencing, which some people may have heard of. It's a guy called Peter Levine invented it. And that entails, uh, I weave that into my coaching. So that might look like, depends what the person presents. So someone may present emotionally. So they may come and they're really sad. They may come presenting something more on an unconscious level. So they may be like, I'm feeling really stuck, but I don't really know why. It may be behavioral. It may be, I have this thought and I can't get rid of it. So depending on how people present is how I will then uh, approach it. But let's say someone comes and they're feeling very emotional, like they, they've been in a bike accident and they come and they're like, this has just happened. I really want to move forward with my goals, but I feel like I'm just really emotional and I'm really stuck. What I would help them to do is actually learn to feel it because a lot of the time when big things happen to us, it's really difficult to feel it. Like it, it makes sense why people avoid their emotions because it can be really big and it can be really scary. Welcome to another episode of Healing Through Love. Each week, we share ideas, experiences, and resources to increase the awareness of domestic and family violence and to empower survivors to grow and thrive. We talk with experts who share their advice or with people who have experienced abuse, no matter where they are on their journey. This is all about healing through love. And now, here are your hosts, Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Hello and welcome to the Healing Through Love podcast, a space where stories of strength and resilience and transformation unfold. I'm your host, Charlene Lynch, and I'm honoured to be your guide on this journey of empowerment and healing. Today we have a special episode tailored just for you, whether you're driving the car or sipping a cup of tea or simply taking a moment for yourself, I want you to know that you're in a safe place. Healing Through Love is more than a podcast. It's a community, a beacon of hope and a reminder that you are not alone. In this episode, we have a guest that will share a story that resonates at the core of our mission, a story that illuminates the power of love, resilience and unwavering strength that lies within each and every one of us. So settle back, take a deep breath, and let the healing journey begin. But for before we start on today's inspiring narrative, just a quick reminder that if you find value in our episodes, consider supporting us by subscribing, sharing, and leaving a review. Your engagement helps us reach the hearts and spread the message of healing at the speed of love. Today, we've got Hannah with us. She's a transformational somatic coach, and we're going to ask her questions exactly what is somatic. And she specializes in embodiment and the nervous system regulation, and we're going to dive in deep to find out more about that. In her coaching practices, she helps ambitious women find their true purpose in life by shifting their fears and doubts so that they can more easily step into the most authentic and magnetic version of themselves and live a life the way they've dreamed of. Hello, Hannah, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. It's so great to have you here. Now, okay, let's start with why somatic healing? So I I would say I used to be a very anxious person, a very fearful person, a very volatile person, reactive person, and I had no idea why. I grew up in quite an angry household, so I just thought, oh, you know, it's in it's in my genes or it's been passed on, learned behavior, whatever. And when I moved to London, there's an abundance of amazing therapists here. And I came to learn that a lot of the reasons why we react in certain ways is because our, it's our nervous system that is affected by people, things, anything sensory around us. And I was particularly sensitive. And so I just got to the point one day where I was like, I don't, I don't feel good in myself and I don't enjoy behaving like this. I don't enjoy being like this. I didn't feel like my relationships were fruitful. There were so many things. And so it made me embark in this journey, this body journey of, of healing all of the trauma, emotions, anything that I'd repressed 
previously at the time I didn't know it but now I'm fully aware of everything I was repressing and then what that does is it's almost like you're you're melting off the chains you could call it like I felt like I was chained by by emotional baggage and then as that starts to melt away what's left is what feels like freedom it feels like emotional freedom it feels like freedom to breathe freedom to take up space freedom to be myself all of the good things so yeah oh I love that I love that many of our listeners are survivors of family and or domestic violence and so feeling that level of safety and that level of trust even in themselves is a challenge so that uh, our audience can understand better what would be some of the things that would be coming up for them that might indicate they need some, some level of somatic healing so I guess as I spoke to any reactivity, so if you're a very, very sensitive person, I think I think all of us as humans are sensitive, but if you feel that you're particularly sensitive, if you feel that you're easily offended or that you react in certain ways, but you don't really know why, or you're either very emotional or the opposite, you have no emotions and you can't access them. Anything, you know, the, the spectrum is so huge, but anything where you... You just, I think we know when we don't feel aligned or when we don't feel particularly good in ourselves, even if we're quite good at pretending that we're okay. I think when we don't feel good in ourselves, that is the first sign. You know, even for something like irritability, being a bit irritable all the time, that is just a sign that your nervous system is dysregulated. So any signs that you're not feeling so good physically, mentally, you can't quite pinpoint what it is that is always a sign. Mm. Okay, so so now we understand what it looks like if it turns up for us. Uh, what is somatic healing and how does somatic healing help regulate the nervous system? Mm. Yeah, that's a lovely question. So soma means body, so it's essentially body therapy and our nervous system is reprised of brain, spinal cord, and we have, uh, most people have heard of parasympathetic and sympathetic. I think those are the two main strains of the autonomic nervous system that, that, that we know of. So we've got the sympathetic, the fight or flight, flee, or we have the parasympathetic, which is our rest and digest. And we ideally, in a, in a healthy body, the, the two work together. So we might have spikes of stress during the day. But the nervous system is designed to then bring us back to what's called regulation, a.k.a. feeling calm, feeling at peace, feeling regulated, feeling good. But often in life, you know, we've had experiences in the past or, you know, and I know you said your viewers have specifically experienced trauma. So a lot of the time we don't get to flush the trauma out of the body like things happen to us. And then we just have to get on with our day or we have to get on with it or we have to pretend it didn't happen or we might not have the means to fully deal with it. And so oftentimes we think that when something's happened, it's done. It, it's, you know, we can forget about it, but the body has a memory of it. So the body's memory is what we need to then shift. And essentially it's almost rewriting the story about what happened because when bad things happen to us, or even when good things happen, we create a story about what that meant. And so we have to rewire the belief systems around what certain stories meant in order to be free of them and so that they no longer hold us back in our future. Mm, I love it. The, the body does. It holds the story. It holds the truth. And, uh, and if you feel that there's something holding <laughs> you back, the body therapy can definitely help you lean in and and open that up and not necessarily talking about opening the wound, talking about opening the, the neural pathways, opening for an opportunity for a reprogram, basically, if you will, for a different belief structure. I love it. So now what type of somatic movement do you do? So I do a method called somatic experiencing, which some people may have heard of. It's a guy called Peter Levine invented it. And that entails, uh, I weave that into my coaching. So that might look like, depends what the person presents. So 
someone may present emotionally. So they may come and they're really sad. They may come presenting something more on an unconscious level. So they may be like, I'm feeling really stuck, but I don't really know why. It may be behavioral. It may be, I have this thought and I can't get rid of it. So depending on how people present is how I will then uh, approach it. But let's say someone comes and they're feeling very emotional, like they, they've been in a bike accident and they come and they're like, this has just happened. I really want to move forward with my goals, but I feel like I'm just really emotional and I'm really stuck. What I would help them to do is actually learn to feel it because a lot of the time when big things happen to us, it's really difficult to feel it. Like it, it makes sense why people avoid their emotions because it can be really big and it can be really scary. And so I help people feel the emotion but then teach them to come back to resource so I ground people I help them find safety whether it's in their body or in their environment so it shows the body okay I'm safe and then when the body feels safe then you can you can kind of go back and forth into what we call activation so feeling very triggered feeling very anxious scared whatever that might be and so I'm helping that person regulate their nervous system in the way that it's actually designed to do on its own mm -hmm. and then the more of that you do the more a person's body can just flush out anxiety on its own without them being stuck with it for the entire day let's say and, and it blocking their minds or their ability to do things yes I love it I love it so I've got so many questions uh, one of them is uh, is it something that you should only just have like one session or do you need to have a group of sessions like how does somatic healing uh work show up as its best as its best <coughs> excuse me um <clears throat> so it's definitely a long-term thing to give you an idea I started doing this 10 years ago and I'm nowhere near there yet um it depends on what your background is of course it depends on you know what kind of trauma you've had we've all had bits of trauma whether we've had the most beautiful upbringing or whether we've had a lot of difficulties so in my case I had a lot of developmental trauma so so parents not being particularly available when I was younger and although that sounds simple children literally depend on their parents for survival not just physically but emotionally as well like babies rely on the parents to actually soothe them and if the parents are not able to do that if they're not soothed themselves then the baby's nervous system quite literally can't cope and so I've been you know, not, I love my parents to death, but they, you know, I haven't had soothing since like, for like ever, basically in my entire life. So I am having to unwind 31 years of being dysregulated, being anxious, being fearful in my body. So for me, I think it's, it's a lifetime's worth of work because it's an absolute privilege to be able to do it. But I would say it's not a quick fix. It's an ongoing thing. And anyone who does it, trust me, you get addicted to it anyway. So you won't want to just do, do, do two sessions. You will want to do more. Okay. So for clients listening, though, are they looking for a one-on-one, -on -one, um, just a once-off therapy session? Or are they looking for, like, surely not 10 years? What's the average length of time a client would see you for? So I do, I do coaching packages. I do transformational coaching packages. Three months is the minimum that I work with people in coaching. Three months, you can see really good results. You can see really good results because in coaching, we don't just change somatically. We change behavior. We change mentality. We change all sorts of levels. So, well, somatic, emotional, behavioral, unconscious, mental. We change all of those levels. Three months is a good amount of time. But if you really want to see transformation, you have to do minimum of six months, in my opinion. I think when we're trying to unwind very deep stuff, a chunk of time, like six months. Some people work with me for up to a year. You know, it depends on what your goals are, how willing you are to go all it all out. But I would say minimum six months if you want to see a total transformation. And it's just, it, it's so worth the investment. It's just, it's just so worth the investment of your time, the investment of your money, the investment of your energy, the investment of, of everything. It's just, it doesn't get any better than the way you feel after something like this. I love it. I love it. Now, I've, I've, I've been blessed to have a couple of opportunities to experience some of these things. 
And I was not expecting climbing around on the floor or crawling around on the floor and making animal noises. That was not what I was expecting. And I was also not expecting to behave like a child or a baby. That was really different. Like I went in thinking I was going to a yoga retreat, but that was not what was happening. Um, I must think I misread the retreat details. But I, um, so I was a little apprehensive, a little bit embarrassed. I didn't really know how to play the game. And then once I just sort of surrendered to the process, it was really beautiful. And in fact, a couple of the girls that I met while I was at that retreat, we're now still really great friends and we do laugh about what we thought we were in for and then what actually happened. So, and uh, yeah, I agree. It is really a... It's a progressive, it's a dynamic, and it is a, an opportunity to heal at a completely different level. It's not like talk therapy. The body does hold the story, and it gives you the opportunity to unpack that and, and basically begin the process of rewiring. And I agree, uh, you need a minimum of three months to uh, to go through the process. I love this. So now how do people contact you to, to find out more details about your packages, H Hannah? Yeah, so uh, my website is, uh, well, this, I'm guessing this might be in the show notes, but I'll, I'll spell it out anyway. So my website is www.hannahblackburn.com. So would you like me to spell it or will it be? No, in no, that's okay. That is going to be in the show notes. I thought there might be another way for them to get contact with you. Are you on social media? I'm on LinkedIn, but that's it for now. So I've got my website and then I've got my LinkedIn. So all of my details are on there, my LinkedIn details, my um every everything that I do is on there I'm also a Pilates teacher so every everything is on there my, my email yeah excellent, excellent so that is in the show notes and also in the show descriptions I love it I love it okay so so people know they've got a particular challenge because they're having these different experiences and they know they need some help they might have tried talk therapies or other types of therapies. And if they haven't been successful, then really a great place to have a look is have a looking at these somatic healings. And uh, if someone's like a VIP, a vaguely interested person, and they're not 100% sold on the idea, um, is there an opportunity for them to try, I, I don't know, like a nervous system reset? Yeah, so I I offer complimentary six. 60 minute what I call breakthrough sessions and that is for anyone who is thinking about it but like you say maybe not be a hundred percent sure if they want to commit so in what we would do in that session is get a whiteboard out we would break down where they are now where they want to be the goals and the things standing in the way and then I would show them how my work would help them get from A to B and then we have a, a discussion and we see whether or not that would be suitable but you know more often than not I, I like to coach people into either a yes or a no I like to empower people to say no I don't like people leaving with I don't know because I don't know is leaky and I don't know it's just no one has time to go and think about stuff right it's like let's let's help you out here let's let's see if you're ready and if you're not maybe you're ready at a different time or maybe you need a different modality right so I like to help people get clear I do love that and there look there's an interesting fact there so research shows us that if you're sitting on the fence, you've got, to, I don't know, rather than a yes or a no, then your own psychological immune system is not able to kick in to support you. So we're talking about a lower immune system. So mm. we're talking sickness. How do I know? <laughs> a recovered hoarder, which is basically 33 cubic meters of indecision. So uh, the power of making a decision is empowering your nervous system, empowering your own psychological immune system to support you to move forward. So I love it. I love it. I love it. This is fantastic. Okay. Mm. So all of these links will be in the show notes and, and different if they want to book the trial, is that through your website, Hannah? Yeah, I'm taking emails with that because I've had quite a lot of different emails. So I'm, I'm, I'm just seeing who is coming to me and then I'm trying to put people in at certain times in my own diary. So if you go to my website and send me an email through my website, then I will get back to you with a time slot if, if you're interested. I love that. I love it. That's fantastic. And now you're in the UK, is that right? That's right. Yeah, I'm in London. Yeah, so it's morning for you. It's afternoon for us here or evening for us. I love I love the fact that we can be anywhere in the world and we can still be communicating. Uh, I just, I, I love the technology, how we can still all connect. It really has made the planet a lot smaller and a lot bigger all at the same time. It's fantastic. 
So, mm-hmm. Hannah, in closing today, I'd love you to share your words of wisdom to our audience in and around, yeah, what it is that to, that they need to know. So what what is what would be your closing words, your words of wisdom to the audience? I would say the biggest thing for me has been learning to trust the process. And I know that's something, I think it's a phrase that's thrown around quite a lot, but it really is one of those things that when it doesn't mean be complacent, but as much as you can just see if you can tune in and just allow yourself to be where you are and try and let things be easeful. I think we always try and make things really hard and we really try and we always want to be somewhere else that we're not. And I think when we just allow life to be as it is, still going for our goals, it will unfold exactly as it's supposed to, right? Oh, I love that. I love that. Trusting the process um, is a challenge. I know. Trust, you know, as a foundational, well, frequency is a challenge when you're coming from an environment where you don't trust the people around you because you're in family and or domestic violence. And, you know, sometimes we don't even trust ourselves. So, it's a big, tall order. Yeah, yes, and it is the answer. When you trust the process, it it is all revealed. And a somatic healing will get you to that place where you can trust your body and you can trust others then as well. Uh, so I love the love of the process. Thank you, Hannah. That's been absolutely amazing. Hannah's links are in the show note and in the show, uh, show description as well. Now, if you're listening today and you're a survivor of family and or domestic violence, we have Pamper Days in your local area. So think a day spa on steroids. Imagine you're having your hair done, having your makeup done, a facial, neck and shoulder massage, a chakra aligning, like you name it, it's there. And we've got 25 practitioners in most of the Pamper Days and it's all provided free for those who are survivors. So if you're interested, reach out to Healing Through Love. We have a Pamper Day happening in your local area. And if you're listening today and you're a practitioner of any description, as long as you provide a service that makes a difference to those who need it most, then reach out to us at Healing Through Love as we're ever expanding. As of 2023, Healing Through Love has gone global and we are looking for practitioners all over the world. We would love to connect with you and see how we can pay it forward together. That's a goodbye from me and a goodbye from Hannah. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Healing Through Love. You can get further resources, see the show notes, or simply reach out to us via our website at htlaustralia.org. Thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to your company next time on the Healing Through Love podcast.